Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Thus far, did you enjoy conference? <laughs> what is the title of this uh, conference? Spiritual revival. I know why you came here to have a spiritual revival. But some people didn't revive it. I see some sad faces. <laughs> this is your last chance. Last chance, no more messages. So I give you a warning that you should revive now. <laughs> before too late. You know, uh, I could not enjoy conference because my mind was occupied with the message. <laughs> So I could not taste food. I don't know <laughs> what I ate. But I have mind of uh, Jesus Christ at this moment. And so let's open our heart and listen to the uh, word of God. The title of today's message is Have the Mind of Jesus Christ. And keywords, we have two uh, different kind of keywords. Uh, first, uh, NIV and King James Version. So we're going to read it, uh, uh, first uh, NIV. Okay, let's, let's go. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Now, King James Version. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are here as your servant. Thank you for using us uh, as your servant by your grace. Help us to put aside uh, differences. And so that uh, we can uh, serve Jesus, I ask in Jesus' name. Sorry, I <laughs> got some reason emotional. <laughs> Apostle Paul wrote to uh, Philippians in the cold uh, Roman prison, but he emphasized the believers to rejoice in Christ. While Paul was absent, there were many problems like division and selfish ambition. With a shepherd heart, Paul appealed to them to have the mind of Jesus Christ. Paul gave them example of Jesus so that they may imitate the humility of Christ and bring unity among them once again. The main theme of this passage is unity with the mind of Christ Jesus. Fifty years ago, UBF began the work of God focusing the university student with Dr. Lee and Mother Mary. UVF will celebrate the year of Jubilee, 50 years of work of God this year. Today, UVF looks like United Bible Fellowship, consisting of many different groups, CVF, JVF, HVF, UVF, Maturing Disciple uh, Fellowship, and Grandparent Fellowship, Bible Fellowship. <laughs> As a result, we are confronting many problems, like a cross-cultural, cross-generational, cross-gender, cross-racial problems as we become diverse, mission-centered church. How can we become one in this situation? We may overcome all problems in humility, imitating Jesus' life led by the Holy Spirit. May God bless all of us to be united as one body of Christ by having the same mind of Jesus and having the same love and being one in spirit and purpose. Let's have spiritual revival through Jesus by putting aside differences 
Today, I stand here as your friend, not as authority, as your mission co-worker and brother in Christ, to appeal to you to be united in Jesus. This will be my practical testimonial message. Part one, being like-minded, one through four. Look at verse four, verse one. Okay, let's read verse one together. Okay, let's go. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion. Unity with Christ brings many spiritual blessings. When we are united with Christ Jesus, we begin to experience encouragement that comes from Christ, comfort from God's love, fellowship with the Spirit, and tenderness and compassion. Our joy overflows like a river when we have Christ in our heart. Even in sufferings, we can rejoice because our beautiful fellowship with Christ. Though Apostle Paul was in prison, he was full of joy because he was united with Christ and other believers. Unity with Christ is closely related to the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Just after Jesus' ascension to heaven, all the apostles, Mary, mother of Jesus, Jesus' disciples, Jesus' brothers, and the women went to the upper room and united in prayer. They were different, but joined together in prayer. Then in Acts chapter 2, Holy Spirit was poured out to them and enabled them to speak foreign languages. 안녕하십니까? Ni hao ma? Danke shen. Wunderbar. Ochen haro show. Muy bien. Bonjour. I can go on, but I have to stop here. <laughs> the first Jerusalem church was born. The fellowship was filled with joy, and all believers laughed and ate together, and encouraged each other, and sang together, and loved one another, sharing everything common. The first believers were led by the Holy Spirit when they were united with Jesus Christ. Acts is called the act of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. It was not the apostles, but the Holy Spirit. The role of the Holy Spirit is crucial to maintain unity. The presence of the Holy Spirit makes our fellowship to become like a death of the first century Christians. We cannot overemphasize the importance of unity in our Christian fellowship. Can you see another picture? Look at, look at the pictures. What is uh, common in these pictures? <laughs> David Brody, what is common in this picture? United. United! I live in United States. I took United Air to go to United Kingdom. Isn't it beautiful that we take all United? I love United Airlines. <laughs> because they treat me special treatment. <laughs> but I'm not talking about United Airlines. I'm talking about unity. The theme is united in this picture. Jesus said in Mark 3.24, let's read Mark 3.24, okay, let's go. If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. It is true that united we stand, divided we fall. Miracle happens when Christians are united together. God sent 1,700 missionaries when UVF were united in Jesus. Look at verse 2. Let's read verse 2. 
Okay, let's go. Then my, make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Paul did not have complete joy because his flocks were not being like-minded. They were experiencing disunity due to their selfish ambition. Do we have another picture? No, there is a disunity picture. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Paul felt the pains of childbirth because of his mother-like shepherd heart for Philippians. What would make his joy complete then? It was for them to be like-minded. I'm so happy to see God's people to be like-minded, co-working together, eating together, and loving each other. How can we be like-minded when we are so different in color, size, shape, eating heavy. <laughs> chuck, 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 some people making a lot of noise. <laughs> hairstyle, look at all hairstyles. <laughs> Driving heavy, sleeping heavy, jaw, and language. Most of the time, we are not being like-minded. We are being different-minded. We can be like-minded when we have same love. As long as we have the same love, there is no problem. Another thing to bring joy to Paul was that they are being one in spirit and purpose. Being one in spirit builds a strong teamwork, makes all members to have a sense of belonging. I belong here. Being one in purpose brings a success and victory. Team spirit in one purpose wins championship. Chemistry makes champions, not the power. There is a good example to being one in purpose. August 2010, there was a mine accident in San Jose mine in Chile. Chile, Chile. 33 miners were trapped in the depth of half a mile underground. First, 33 people debated how to get out of the mine vigorously. They fought each other with different suggestions. Debate, debating is good in America. In school, I learned how to debate. In Korea, I never debate. I just uh, listen to the professor. <laughs> That's all I did. I copied what the professor said. I just spit out when I had exam. But in America, different. We have to criticize. <laughs> they had 33 different ideas how to survive in deep mind. After debating, their sense of crisis helped them to agree with each other, and they became one in purpose. They chose a leader, agreed to follow his direction. Their purpose was to get out of the mine alive. They were united in one purpose to see their loved ones again. Happy Valentine. They were united in their prayers. Then United States of America, NASA, helped to dig a line to provide oxygen. Samsung Electronics provided cell phones to communicate. And the whole country supported them from the president and the whole world rallied behind them. All worked together with the same purpose. They came out jubilantly after 69 days underground. We did it! <laughs> we did it together! <laughs> Celebrate! <laughs> the whole world cheered them watching a live TV broadcasting CNN. In the same way, we have to become one in purpose. We don't need uniformity, but unity. Though we maintain our uniqueness in our diverse environment, we can be one in purpose because we belong to the same body of Jesus Christ. 
Look at verse 3. Okay, let's read uh, verse 3 together. Okay, let's go. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Selfish ambition causes them to have a rivalry spirit. Vain conceit means empty glory. It was probably the root cause of their selfish ambition. Some said, I belong to the circumcision group. Others said, I belong to Greek-speaking group. Still some said, I belong to hamburger-eating group. <laughs> Others said, I belong to kimchi and bulgogi-eating group. Some said, I belong to second-gen group. Others said, I belong to native disciple group. They were divided in ethnic groups or in cultural lines. Look around how you are sitting together. Who, who is sitting next to you? Mostly like-minded people sitting together. <laughs> if you look around, I think, if you go eating place, you always the same people eat together. Please mix up. You know, why do you see this every day, same person? Aren't you tired looking at them? Paul encouraged them by saying, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Me-centered life causes disunity and spiritual chaos. It hurts coworkers and brings division. So we must examine our motives before we serve God's work carefully, whether we have a selfish ambition or vain conceit. Then we have to repent of our selfishness and to serve others first with God's love. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Now Paul gave his flocks a positive exhortation saying, in humility, consider others better than yourselves. How can we consider others better than ourselves when we all think that we are better than others? <laughs> That's a good question. Baby boomer generation think. You listened to yesterday, Dr. Day's analysis of four generations, right? So I'm baby boomer. So baby boomer generation think boomers knows the best. <laughs> I'm a baby boomer. And some of you are baby boomer. And missionary Esther Lee is a baby boomer too. So what happens when two baby boomers <laughs> meet together? <laughs> there are crashes. So I consider myself better than her. <laughs> I know the best. Then she considers herself better than me. <laughs> no compromise. We stand firm in our own ground. <laughs> no compromise. How to deal with the ship's problem. This is my way. But he says, no, this is my way. My way is better. Most arguments erupt because I'm selfish and think that my idea is better than hers. After arguing, I'm troubled. Lose peace. There is a good menu in the dinner, so I ate ramen. <laughs> what is the strategy to fix this problem then? How can I fix? Cold war may continue, then I, I'm suffering. So I apologize first, <laughs> saying, I made a mistake. I consider you better than me <laughs> because you are my wife. Not because I have a better idea, because you are simply my wife. I treat a person, God's servant. Huh? OK. <laughs> I never forgot. I never forget to buy flowers in, for her birthday, anniversary, Valentine's Day, whatever, big day. <laughs> then I enjoy peace and the dinner menu changes. <laughs> we have a great spirit of co-working together and life is so joyful. Life is wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> but in reality, it is very difficult to do so. So Paul added one condition. In humility, in humility, 
in front of this word of encouragement. Humility before God and man is a virtue we should strive for. In pride, we consider ourselves better than others, but in humility, we can consider others better than ourselves. Pride hurt unity, but humility builds unity. Let's practice humility by saying to our neighbor, okay, look at your neighbor, okay? You are better than me. Okay, let's say it together. You are better than me. Wow, you look so happy. <laughs> Amen. That's the, that's the way that we can have joy and revival. Look at verse 4. Okay, let's read verse 4. Okay, let's go. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. When we are busy, we say, you take care of your problem. I take care of my own problem. Then what happened? We cannot build our relationship. After giving instructions of do's and don'ts for the believers at Philippi, finally Paul realized that these exhortations would not be sufficient for them to have unity among them. Paul gave them fundamental direction using Jesus' life as an example to maintain unity among them. Following Jesus, imitating his life, are our goal of life. Part two, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross, 538. Look at verse five. Okay, let's read together one more time, uh, verse five. Uh, first NIV, then uh, King James Version. Okay, let's go. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I think the King James Version translation is close to the original Greek text. Greek text is the main verb which is think. Think in you as Jesus think. So thinking is very important. How we think. To learn humility, we have to think like Jesus. We have to imitate Jesus' life. We need to have the mind of Jesus to have unity among us. Our attitude comes from our mind. Sinful men have a difficulty to be humble by nature. But as long as we have the mind of Jesus, we can be humble and there is no co-working problem. As long as we have a mind of Jesus, we have beautiful fellowship among us because our attitude toward others is the same as that of Christ Jesus. Christ is the supreme example of humility and the selfless concern for others. Let's learn Jesus' true humility in verses 6 through 8. Look at verse 6a. Who being in very nature God. Though Jesus is the Son, in a sense, he is God himself. Look at verse 6b. What did he do with his God nature. He did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Though Jesus possessed the full deity, Christ did not consider his equality with God as something to be grasped or held onto. In other words, Christ set aside his divine nature when he became a man. People like to add power at the stretch of imagination. People pop their authority like a popcorn, saying, I am in charge. But our Lord Jesus did not consider equality with God, though he was God himself. Praise Jesus who showed true humility to be with us. Amen. Amen. Look at verses 7 through 8. Shall we read it together, uh, 7 through 8? Okay, let's go. But made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, as being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Our Lord Jesus was born in a manger as a humble baby. Jesus lowered himself to the lowest place to be with man. He is our Emmanuel. 
He became poor to make us rich in God. John 1, 14, 8 says, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Jesus is fully God and fully man. How our awesome God became a man. God came to us when we could not go to him due to our helpless sin problem. Jesus came to us as our friend. When my grandson Josiah cries, I go to him because he cannot come to me. In the same way, Jesus came to us while we were sinners. Incarnation involves Jesus' humility. Jesus became like one of us to share God's love with us. What was involved in his taking the very nature of a servant? Christ's humiliation included his making himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, and the being made in human likeness. Nobody likes to be a servant, but Jesus became a servant, gave his life for us. I asked the Dr. Paul Hong, who is your Here's Dr. Forum, right there. Who is your most respected religious leader? He said, I respect Billy Graham most. Do you agree? Billy Graham most. He explained why. Billy Graham is known as clean hand. He learned how to empty himself as a successful evangelist and Christian leader. He did not involve in any scandals. <laughs> He overcame the temptation of money, power, and women. He lived as a humble servant. One time he invited Muhammad Ali, Muslim convert, and spent time with him. After spending time, Ali said, I wish I were a Christian if all Christians are like you. Billy Graham's Christ-like character moved Ali's heart. Billy Graham was learning from Jesus. He became our role model. Our character, not preaching, influences our Bible student most. What was involved in his being obedient even to death? Look at verse 8 again. Okay, let's read uh, verse 8 uh, one more time. Okay, let's go. And the being found in appearance as a man. Jesus' obedience to his father's will was very costly. It involved his death on a Roman cross. Hebrews 5a says, although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Obedience involved his death even on a cross. The death on the cross was the cruelest way of punishment. Romans used the cross to execute the criminals who were not the Roman citizens. Jesus was beaten, flogged, blindfolded, shed all his blood, and died on the cross with two criminals. Let's look at Jesus on the cross. What do you see? He said in Luke 23, 34. Okay, shall we read together that verse over there? Okay, let's go. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. From the last word of Jesus on the cross, I thought about the mind of Jesus. Where was his mind? His mind was not on his extreme pain, but on soldiers who crucified him. He did not think about his own death, but thought about our pain and suffering under the power of sin and death. The mind of Jesus is the forgiveness based on God's unconditional love for sinners. The mind of Jesus is like a mother's love for her children. When we have a mind of Jesus, we can love all kinds of people like a mother. It was our sin that nailed our Lord Jesus on the cross. Were you there when they crucified Jesus? Yes, we were there when they crucified our Lord. When we suffer under the burden of sin, let's come under the cross of Jesus. 
receive his forgiveness of sin. The cross of Jesus is the emblem of God's love for all fallen men. When we do not know the mind of Jesus, we become burden to our sheep and a small dictator to our children and others. When we do not have a mind of Jesus, we become selfish, legalistic, condemning machine. But when we have a mind of Jesus, we live by the grace of God and become a blessing to others. What did Jesus accomplish on the cross? We experienced the spiritual revival at the mitzvah through repentance yesterday. In the New Testament, we have a spiritual revival at the cross of Jesus. This is spiritual revival. Old life had gone and the new life has come. We have new life in the cross of Jesus. Jesus' cross restored our relationship with God. We can call God Abba Father. God became our Heavenly Father. We become His children. Jesus' cross restored our broken relationship with our sisters and brothers. We all became the family of God. Ephesians 2.14 said, For He Himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. Through the cross of Jesus, he created one new family by destroying all human barriers, dividing wall of hostility. We become members of God's precious family, breaking the cross-cultural barrier, the language barrier, the ethnic barrier, the generation barrier, educational barrier, the gender barrier. We are many, but we are one. Look around us. We are different, but we are one in Jesus. We have the same God, same Jesus, same faith. Amen. Amen. When the Berlin Wall was destroyed in 1990, the whole world celebrated, picking up pieces of stones, and Germany was united as a one nation under one flag. Praise God. Nobody is trying to reveal the Berlin Wall. <laughs> Pastor uh, Peter Zhang, uh, Dr. Peter Zhang, Peter Zhang is here. Are you going to reveal the Berlin Wall? <laughs> not sure what to do. Okay, he will not build the Berlin Wall. It's, it's, it's gone. It's gone. Is there? Yeah, you look at that, and you cannot build it again. Is there anyone here to try to build the barrier? The dividing world of hostility does nullify the work of the cross. We cannot nullify the work of the cross. We divide, we should not be divided. We should not build the world of hostility again. In humility, we must be united as a one body in Christ. I know all of us came to UVA because of Jesus. We experienced God's amazing grace and became God's, uh, God's servant, sacrificing our lives. We love Jesus. We love Bible study as the authority of our life. When Peter failed running away from Jesus and needed comfort and encouragement, Jesus did not say to him, you are fired. <laughs> he came and called him friend. Jesus prepared a delicious breakfast at the beach and they had a love conversation. Do you, do you love me? <laughs> More than this. Peter was restored through Jesus' love. Praise Jesus who understands each of us and they loved us as we are. Part three. God exalted Jesus to the highest place, 9 through 11. Jesus did not exalt himself, but humbled himself to death, even on the cross. Then God exalted Jesus. 
Humiliation belongs to us, but exaltation belongs to God. We don't have to try to exalt ourselves, seeking position of authority. Instead, we should live as a humble servant of God, always. Then God will exalt us according to our humility in due time. Why we work hard to exalt ourselves? <laughs> only, only God can exalt us anyhow. <laughs> to what extent did God exalt Jesus when he humbled himself to serve sinners? Look at verses 9 through 11. Okay, let's read 9 through 11. This is actually a highlight of message. When I thought about it, this is a really good passage. Okay, let's read it together, 9 through 11. Okay, let's go. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth, under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God the Father. Praise God. Praise God. We all confess Jesus as our Lord. Every tongue, every nation. God the Father is the subject of on these verses 9 through 11. Whereas in verses 6 through 8, Jesus was subject. Think about two parallel. Jesus and the God the Father. It's a parallel. 6 through 8, 9 through 11. It is matching head to head, line by line. It's a matching. What can we learn here? Christ's obedience was followed by Father's exaltation of him to the place of highest honor. Jesus opened a new chapter of human history through his obedience. We see the beautiful co-working between God the Father and the God the Son here and the God the Holy Spirit. Because of Jesus' obedience, God exalted him. The exaltation refers to his resurrection, ascension, glorification at the Father's right hand. Jesus was sitting right hand of God. His name is not merely a title. It refers to his person, to his position, to dignity and honor. God will honor all people who are suffering to obey Jesus' world mission command. God gave Jesus all authority in heaven and on earth. Matthew 28, 18 through 19. We must pave the last chapter of Jesus' great commission to prepare his second coming again. That's what we are hoping for. That's what uh, we, are, we are living for. Glorious coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Don't be petty for small things in this world. <laughs> Have a bigger dream, bigger glory in God. Lord, come soon. We can preview the glorious worship as a God's people, as a redeemed people of God, as a risen people of God. Revelation 5, 9, and 10 says, okay, let's read Revelation 9, 5, 9, 9, uh, 5, 9 through 10. Okay, let's go. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll, to open its seals, because you were slain. With your blood, you purchased men for God from every tribe, language, people, and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom, priest, to serve our God. They will reign on earth. They are going to reign on the earth. Imagine that glorious day that we all sing together. Human history will be culminated at the glorious coming of Jesus. At the second coming of Jesus, every tribe, language, people, and nation will worship God as God Almighty, everlasting God. We will reign with Jesus forever in his kingdom. We are God's kingdom people. As the bride of the Lamb, we will attend the wedding of the Lamb and praise him together. If we are divided here, how can we praise God in heaven? Think about it. During our life on the earth, we must learn. We must learn how to work together as we all praise God together in heaven. Today, Mid-Atlantic Shining Star Vocal Team work together 
under the direction of Christopher Kelly. They are beautiful people of God singing in the heaven later. Not now, but we need to work together right now. Apostle Paul imitated Jesus' humility and became one of the most fruitful servants of God in Christian history. He already introduced himself as a servant of Jesus Christ. That was his title. At the beginning, first verse of all epistles, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. What a, what a glorious title. He already introduced Jesus, the servant of Jesus. He expressed his life purpose in Philippians 3.10. I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection, to the resurrection of the dead. 